Today's video is brought to you by Athletic Greens and its wonderful blend of daily vitamins and minerals. AG1 by Athletic Greens is a comprehensive all-in-one greens powder engineered to fill the nutritional gaps in your diet and support your body's nutritional needs across four pillars of health. Gut health, immune support, energy, and recovery. It's packed with 75 vitamins and minerals listed on the back, whole food sourced ingredients combining the perfect amount of micronutrients, absorption, and taste to jumpstart your daily routine. You'd really be hard-pressed to find a more comprehensive powder or supplement on the market. Now, you guys know I'm not exactly a fitness YouTuber. What I do every morning just to uh, make sure my diet's going okay, look, there are gaps in it. <laughs> There are gaps in everyone's minds, probably worse than most. But I fill those gaps with AG1. I take a scoop from here, I put it in the jar, I shake it up, and I drink it. It's simple. I probably did need to explain it. It also tastes great. It's gluten-free, dairy-free, paleo, vegan, keto, low allergen, and low calorie. Less than one gram of sugar per serving. One of the things I personally like about it, I have it with my coffee in the morning. I feel like it um, sustains my energy throughout the day and means I drink less coffee, which is also probably a good thing for my health. Look, AG1 is the perfect dietary support regimen. So if this sounds like the supplement you've been looking for, then you can grab your own immunity bundle. That's one year of vitamin D. Take a drop of that every day. Easy. Plus five individual travel packs with your first purchase at Athletic Green com slash side projects again years supply of vitamin d five free travel packs athleticgreens.com slash side projects or just click the link in the description below and now today's video Long before the Wright brothers first achieved powered flight, humanity had developed an obsession with space. Literary examples of this go back as far as 1638, when Francis Godwin published his book, The Man in the Moon, which tells the story of a Spanish explorer who travels to the moon in a spaceship powered by geese. Yes. Really. This story captivated 17th century readers and paved the way for untold numbers of space exploration stories that would follow. When the Wright brothers first took to the skies in 1903, people started to believe that space exploration would one day transcend the fictional world and become a reality. From that day forth, humans would continue to improve upon the original aeroplane designs, and in doing so, they would bring the idea of traveling into space closer and closer to reality. Today, we're going to follow the progress of that idea as we look at the past the present and the future of the space plane. Arguably the first person to propose the idea of a space plane was Friedrich Zander, a Baltic German pioneer of rocket design working for the Soviet Union. In 1911, Zander published designs for a spacecraft partially built from combustible alloys. The spacecraft would be able to take off like a conventional aircraft and would then burn its wings as fuel to escape the upper atmosphere when they were no longer needed. Unfortunately, this design was never followed up, and in spite of many proposed designs, it would be another 70 years before the first space plane was actually launched. With the 1960s heralding the beginning of space exploration, it soon became apparent that the use of single-use spacecraft would no longer be viable, and in 1972, three years after humans first walked on the surface of the moon, the idea of a reusable space shuttle was presented to the public for the first time. Billed as a space truck, which would, among other things, be used to build a United States space station, the project immediately received huge amounts of interest and excitement from the public. However, in reality, it was a little more complicated than that. Not only would this vehicle need to be able to escape the Earth's atmosphere, but it would also need to be capable of maneuvering whilst traveling through the vacuum of space. Then, of course, at the end of its mission, it would have to return to Earth, and then, on top of all that, it'd have to be able to repeat this whole thing many, many times. Launched on the 12th of April 1981, the Columbia Space Shuttle was just such a craft. Equipped with two reusable solid fuel engines and an external disposable fuel tank, the Columbia was capable of making the journey into space while carrying up to eight astronauts and 50,000 pounds of cargo. Once there, these astronauts could utilize a number of small boosters, which were allowed to maneuver and specially designed wings would allow it to re-enter the atmosphere and return to the grounds, much like a conventional glider. Furthermore, it had been designed to be able to repeat this journey up to 100 times. In time, Columbia would be joined by Challenger, Discovery, Atlantis, and Endeavour. Together, these vehicles would make up the world's very first, and so far only, fleet of space planes. <laughs> On 
On July the 21st, 2011, the Space Shuttle Atlantis would land for the final time, marking the end of this incredible 30-year-long project. At a total cost of $211 billion, America's fleet of space planes had, during its 135 missions, assisted in completing work on the International Space Station, carried out repairs on the Hubble Telescope, and played host to countless scientific experiments designed to improve mankind's understanding of the effects of weightlessness on everything from the human body to insects and plant life. Unfortunately, the shuttle program had not been without incident, though. On the 28th of January 1986, the Space Shuttle Challenger broke apart 73 seconds into its 10th official flight, killing all seven people on board. According to reports, the cause of this accident was eventually determined to be the failure of two redundant ring seals in a joint in the Space Shuttle's right solid rocket booster. Disaster would strike again on the 1st of February 2003 when the Space Shuttle Columbia broke apart during re entry. It's believed that during takeoff, Columbia's wing was struck by some falling debris, which compromised the structural integrity of some of the heat shielding designed to prevent the craft from burning up when returning into the Earth's atmosphere. On the 15th of November 1988, the Soviet Union launched its first and only space plane, the Buran. Though the Buran was officially designed for transporting spacecraft, cosmonauts, and supplies into orbit, in reality, the Soviet Union were concerned about the possible military uses of the American Space Shuttle, and the Buran was designed to counter that threat. Similar in appearance to the American Space Shuttle, the Buran was first carried into the upper atmosphere by another vehicle before launching into orbit with the use of smaller rocket boosters, much like the modern-day Virgin Galactic Spaceship 2. Just like the shuttle, the Buran was also capable of re-entering Earth's atmosphere and landing like a conventional airplane. Although undergoing extensive testing within the atmosphere, the only orbital mission was undertaken with no crew members aboard, and the project would be abandoned on the 30th of June 1993, in part because it was believed that its military capabilities were no longer necessary. In an interview, former Russian cosmonaut Oleg Kotov had this to say about the termination of the program. We had no civilian tasks for Buran, and the military ones were no longer needed. It was originally designed as a military system for weapons delivery, maybe even nuclear weapons. Unfortunately, the plans for the Buran project remain classified, and it is highly unlikely that they'll be made available in the foreseeable future. With the cancelling of the Buran project and the permanent grounding of the remaining shuttles, the world would once again begin the search for the next generation of space plane. <laughs> The brainchild of Virgin's founder, Sir Richard Branson, Virgin Galactic Spaceship 2 utilizes many of the same principles as the Buran in that it is carried into high orbit by another aircraft before utilizing booster rockets to carry it into suborbit. However, unlike the Buran, Spaceship 2 was designed neither for military nor scientific advancement. Rather, it was designed for tourism. Virgin Galactic writes on their website that we are the world's first commercial space line and our purpose is to connect people across the globe to the love, wonder, and awe created by space travel. Once reaching suborbit, passengers will experience a brief period of weightlessness before entering the atmosphere and making a runway land much like any traditional airplane. The whole experience from takeoff to landing lasts about two and a half hours and costs nearly half a million dollars. On 11th of July 2021, Richard Branson himself participated in the first of these flights and it is now possible for anybody with the available funds to book a seat on future journeys. However, quick jaunts into space are not the only goal for Virgin Galactic. The company has plans to develop an aircraft that will be able to achieve suborbit under its own power and once there, it will be able to take advantage of the lack of air friction and travel at several thousand miles an hour before re-entering the atmosphere and landing at different points around the globe. If Virgin Galactic are able to achieve this, it would mean that the new aircraft would be able to travel from London to New York in less than one hour and from London to Sydney, Australia in less than three hours. Although this is very much still in the hypothetical stages, it may soon be possible to travel halfway around the world for a business meeting and then return the same day. Designed and built as part of NASA's commercial crew program, the Starliner's main purpose will be to transport crew and cargo to and from the International Space Station. This reusable capsule has been designed to be compatible with several existing launch systems, such as the Atlas V, Delta IV, and Falcon 9 rockets. Once completed, it will be capable of docking with the space station for up to seven months before making the return journey to Earth. Unfortunately, Boeing's project has been beset with problems. Although some successful tests have been carried out, a scheduled unmanned mission to the space station that was supposed to take place on the 3rd of August 2021 was cancelled just hours before launch because of problems with propulsion system valves. Boeing has since rescheduled the launch for an undisclosed date in 2022. 
On January the 19th, 2022, Washington-based startup Radian Aerospace announced that it had secured $27.5 million to begin development of the Radian 1. If successful, this craft will be able to take off from a standard runway and proceed under its own power into orbit without the use of primary stage rocket engines. To save fuel on takeoff, Radian 1 will be attached to a jet-propelled sledge, which will carry the aircraft along a runway until it reaches takeoff speed. At this point, it will detach and allow the aircraft to take off in the conventional manner. The aircraft will be capable of flying into low Earth orbit and remaining there for up to five days before returning to Earth and landing on a runway. Radian Aerospace claimed that they'll be able to have the aircraft serviced and ready to fly again within 48 hours of landing. This incredible turnaround speed, coupled with the fact that Radian 1 will be able to remain in orbit for such a long time, means that it could truly be a game changer for both scientific observations and the transportation of cargo, such as satellites, into orbit. According to Doug Greenlaw, a Radian investor and advisor, Radian is doing what's known as the holy grail of accessing space with full reusability and responsiveness to provide customers unmatched cost-effectiveness and flexibility. Unlike some proposals, this project is already underway. At the time of putting this video together, Radian Aerospace have developed and built a suitable engine for their space plane, and a spokesperson has said that the goal is to have the vehicle operational well before 2030. So with all of this technological advancement in mind, how far are we away from being able to travel to another planet? Well, the answer is really quite far. Although mankind's made some spectacular advances in the last 30 years or so, the ability to travel to other planets still eludes us. However, with Elon Musk's plans to build a habitable station on Mars in the next 20 years, maybe it's not so far away after all.